why it's different this time if you're an investor. So if you're, whether you're a, a real estate investor, a business investor, or a stock market investor, it matters because it matters in which market cycle you are. And history always repeats itself. <clears throat> and what's occurring right now is a structural macroeconomic change that is so rare incurring that the last time it happened was 1980 when Paul Volcker left the Fed and brought in Alan Greenspan. And that's an accommodated Fed. And it led to the most historic bull markets for bonds going from 20% roughly to zero with negative interest rates in 2022. And there's an inverse relationship, historic bond run, can't be repeated again in the future, and plus an accommodative Fed for equities. Now, you can't repeat these again in the future. So with that, what's your model built? Is your model built based upon history repeating itself? That's it, you gotta challenge the assumptions. And most, most financial planning simply just people reliant on the old W2, 401k, invest for the future. You better align your investment strategy with that. Knowing that what's your time valuation? Will it be different this time? It's my belief now, based upon S&P value um, yields less than money market yields right now. Money markets are risk-free, and I'm willing to bet that at the end of the day, when there's other runs on banks, that the Fed's going to basically have to say that all of them, because everyone's going to panic that they're not titled properly. But aside from that, the, the, my point is over the next 10 years, 10 to 15 years, the entire system will come under duress. Market valuations overall, the S&P just measured by the S&P PE ratio, which is at historic highs right now. There's some market anomalies that's, that, that's basically making the data look as if they're not as high as they are, which are basically anomalies that are shown through the 2007-9 phase that are showing S&P valuations going to the thousand. And that's because they backdated and scrubbed some data that it's, it wasn't that true in in hindsight to what's happening. And what's, what I'm saying now is everyone's saying that the, the, what's happened the past 15 years is gonna repeat again. And I'm saying it's mathematically impossible because bonds are gonna now have, regardless, and you have to ask yourself this, all of that the past, that the past epic, I'll call, say it, whatever it is, um, era, that accommodative Fed, credit was expanding. Ask yourself this, is credit expanding or tightening? And the answer is it's tightening. And what that does, it gums the works up. And there might be a lagged effect, but everything is slowing. So we have a change in the Fed, and then we had some very bad behavior done on the fact of the Federal Reserve. Ben Bernanke did something that had never, never been done before. So we are now in a financial Petri dish with because of the offensive tactics of quantitative easing, then going out to quanti quantitative easing infinity, then during the COVID things, federal open market committees where the Fed buys things was buying junk bonds, propping up zombie companies. Then on top of it, sprinkling trillions of dollars to people that were selling used sneakers for profits. And I was told that I don't know the new economy. I know one thing, people that uh, buy art, will always have the money to buy it. People that buy sneakers, they're gonna feel this over the next 10 to 15 years. Over the next 10 to 15 years, there's gonna be a structural change. Why is the biggest landowners in this country now, BlackRock, Vanguard, all the REITs, huh? Because it's gonna be the haves and the have nots. Valuations matter. Money markets move money to real estate that's income producing. Assuming you can do this, make it a business, because it's going to be the haves and the have-nots. You want to be the haves. Your home is a lifestyle asset. It's costing you money, unless you can unlock it somehow through your business or something. But most of the time, it's keeping up with the Joneses. This is real financial information. So why is it different? Well, they say it is. It's already had a tremor, so to speak, back in March of 2023 we're in. Mm. So they've only addressed it with a Band-Aid. They know they have to come back to it in year. The Fed's sh shifted their, pack, their tactics now that now they're selling puts. Any panic, they're selling puts. So they've done it. It's worked. 
it worked in October of 2022. It worked again in 2023. We're up to here. We're close to highs. But look at the breadth of the market. There's no breakout. There's a lagged effect. And what I'm saying is based upon long-term statistical data, based upon valuations, historical over the five quintiles, your, your best rate, your best chances are to wait till value to enter retirement based upon low valuations. Well, if you're entering retirement right now at a high multiple, which you are, you better align your, your, your investment strategy because what if your investments get cut in half over the next years? And then you're hit with, now you have a whole host of problems because now you have sweet sequence of return risks. Now you have to draw off a retire off a off a portfolio that's shrinking, you have math working against you in compound math, you have a lot of headwinds. What I'm saying is the next 15 years, and you have, will be different, challenge assumptions. Get a plan, ask someone. I have solutions. I can get into the details in terms of the Fed, in terms of them going there. They, they, they ignore inflationary fears now. You know, look already something that happened. The British pound collapsed not too there. You know, overnight lending, and that was... Not too long ago, there's the, we're now, I've been laughed at saying that the U.S. dollar will lose its world reserve currency status, and we might not lose it totally, but we're already under attack, and it chips away, and it's an inf a big negative, basically the whole world since 1971, when we left the world with the gold standard, the whole world has accommodated us to, to have to convert into U.S. dollars to buy, to buy oil. Why? They're subsidizing our lives. And people are so naive to think this gonna, these are going to erode. It's going to be a less of a standard of living for most people unless they get their investment, unless they start to think differently. Because I'm telling you point blank, in my opinion, and I put my money where my mouth is and I aligned my investments to where it is. I believe the real value is in hard, real assets. And, and most certainly the most tax benefits are there. But it is this different this time. I can go on and on. I, I do plan to write and speak more of it and, and eventually write a book on this. But history is unfolding itself. And don't be fooled by where the S&P is right now. Because that right now is to look at, don't look at this and don't look at everything else. Because once this happens, it's going to trickle down. It's going it, to, it'll become a mental thing. Because everyone wrongly expects the future to repeat itself again. And it mathematically can't. Because you can't have an accommodative Fed on both things. Because you can't have an economy running at 0% anymore. It's not possible. It's not people can buy less house. It costs more to live. It costs more to buy and finance. We're a consumer economy and people are overspent. Eventually, water meets its level. And listen, I'm not watching CNBC and telling you where the market's going every day. And even if it did do a breakout in there, I, I, what I'm saying is over the next 10, the market will come under strain. It will, it, it'll be tested again. And the severity of it will make 2007, nine look like child's play in my professional opinion. And I've traded successfully to the bubble of 2000, 2008, many crises. I traded through 2018 successfully and always made money and I can back it up. And what I'm saying here is, what am I advocating for? Diversifying. And if you're in paper fiat currency, money market. The Vanguard money market is the best, even though they're really becoming a monopoly in terms of what they're doing, they have the best, the, the best money market and rate and it's risk-free. Aside from the I-bond, but there's only 10 grand. What I'm saying is an alternative plan. And then to be tax efficient, be well-rounded, protect your risk, but grow and think differently. Don't be like the herd. Don't, you want to go the other way. I've always been the salmon, and here I'll give you salmon advice. I've been a contrarian my whole life, and I'll continue to be. And everyone in hindsight will think of this. It, it'll be so easy to see. And I'm telling you now to, to start to prepare yourself, because in the next 15 years, there'll be universal basic income through automation. People are going to lose jobs. There's not, housing will no longer be affordable. When all commercial real estate collapses, all of the malls and strip malls you see will be taken over by the federal government when all the, the small banks either get taken up or fail. And those will be all housing and people just living on universal basic income because you can't, without feeding people and giving them their basic needs, they would riot. So this is the new world. It is coming, folks. So you better be prepared. Commodities are a real asset. They're part of that real asset. Three asset classes. One is paper fiat currency. Two is real estate, the best and most, the most predictable and tax reliable. And then business offers a lot of tax benefits. There's a lot of risk and tour, but it's what you choose, but you need to 
think differently and challenge the system. It's okay to be question things and just ask and just ask questions of what if, what are the assumptions used? The past will not repeat itself. I, I, I stake my professional claim on it, but I have a, a 10 to 15 year window. So you're not, I'm not going to watch CNBC and you're not going to challenge my, my thesis based upon where the S&P is quarter by quarter. We're going to measure this on, a, on an annual or th annual and annual basis. It's going to, and it's always revised quarterly, but it's different and it's never been more clear. And all I'm saying is the SPY valuation, if you measure it through that, the breadth of the market is non-existent. And it's an illusion that will, will basically, based upon long-term statistical data, it'll revert to its mean over time, 10 to 15 years. And that's where it is different this time, new Fed that's really pulling the strings, puppet master, no more. And when rates are 0%, but they will be, and that will be at the time where I'm saying I would buy everything and that's when everyone will be selling. Because that's when the system will be broke, when they have to go back to zero. And that's when I, I'll be buying into that point and a buyer into that point. I'm telling you my plan, laying it out. Stay in money markets. They're the best. Fire your advisor. Stay in money markets. 6%. I love it. Diversify. 